어, 많이 들어와 주셔서 감사합니다. 저, 제가 이 똑같은 톡을 저, 집중 강연을 저, 파리에서 지난 6월에 했었는데요. 그걸 하면서 이걸 여기서만 할게 아니라 저 우리 학생들한테도 아니면 우리 저 젊은 연구자들한테도 좀 가, 어, 발표를 하면 좋겠다. 강의를 하면 좋겠다 하는 생각이 들어서 님즈에다가 일부러 막저 푸시를 해서 강의를 하도록 됐는데 뭐또 사정상 이렇게 장소도 변경되고 그랬네요. 네, 어, 근데 지금 여기 계시는 우리말로 할까 했었는데 우리말로 하는 게 저도 훨씬 편한데 여기 외국분들이 몇분 계세요. 한국 사람처럼 생긴 외국분도 계시고 <웃음> 외국 사람처럼 생긴 외국분도 계시는데 그래서 여, 영어로 영어로 <웃음> So I'll speak in English again Are you happy about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, so in in four hours, uh, I'm going to speak about this uh, interface problems, and the basic approach is a layer potential theory, and the using layer potentials, uh, uh, you can. The, deal with the many interface problems and I'm going to explain you. Uh, that. So first I'll explain you this uh, the classical notion of the Neumann Poincaré operator, which is very classical. And then using Neumann Poincaré operator, we will define so-called the generalized polarization tensor, which is a geometric quantity associated with the shapes. And then using this generalized polarization tensor, uh, I'll explain you how the shapes can be described. And then uh, using this, again, this general notion of general polarization tensor, uh, how it can be applied to the the recent topics, so-called invisibility and cloaking. And then, uh, again, using this normal Poincaré operator, we, we will discuss about this uh, anomalous localized resonance. And then, uh, again, this normal Poincaré operator uh, can be applied to this uh, stress concentration, analysis of stress concentration. Survey all these uh, topics with considering. So, uh, start with the Neumann Poincare operator. So, this, uh, this is a very classical notion. Okay? Start with the Neumann problem. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Laplace equation, Poisson equation with uh, uh, Neumann boundary conditions. Uh, even, even though I, I'm speaking in English, if you have the Question: You can ask in Korean. <laughs> Stop me anytime if you have the difficulty understanding this. <coughs> uh, we want to solve this uh, uh, boundary value problem. Okay, this is classical problem. And the one way, one powerful way of solving this problem is uh, using so-called the layer potentials. Layer potential is uh, gamma is a so-called fundamental solution. This is log in 2D and 1 over x in 3D. This is a harmonic function. Okay. So if you take integral of this against a certain potential, then this is automatically harmonic. So this harmonicity is already <coughs> satisfied. Now what you have to do, so the, the, we are seeking solution in this form. So what you have to do is take a normal derivative of this and match with the normal boundary condition. But this single layer potential has a, a very special property. The single layer potential is, so we have a boundary. And I'm taking single layer potential of the boundary. 
So x is e e here or here, right? not on the boundary. So if I take a normal derivative, and uh, plus means I'm approaching from outside, and the minus means uh, I'm approaching this direction, then it has a jump. If it is a plus, then one half, and minus, then minus one half of the certain plus some operator. This operator is just a derivative of the fundamental solution. Okay. This operator is called this operator is called Neumann Poincaré operator. Actually, Poincaré and Neumann, these people uh, who studied this uh, operator. Okay. <coughs> so, in order to match uh, this uh, Neumann boundary condition, all we have to do is to solve this problem. This is an integral equation. So if you solve this integral equation and find the phi, then integrate against the fundamental solution, which is a single layer potential, then you have the solution. So the basic question is, is uh, invertibility of this. Okay. Now, if the domain boundary omega is uh, smooth enough, then this operator is compact. So, whole theory of freedom is uh, identity plus compact. This is compact perturbation of the identity, I mean, invertible operator. So, freedom alternative uh, can be applied. So, because it is compact, it is easy. Actually, it's easy to see that it is invertible. The invertibility is uh, equivalent to the injectivity, one to one. So it's, it's easy, and also it is known this by the catalog, this classical theorem of catalog, that the the spectrum of this guy lies in between minus one half and half. Okay. Now, uh, if the boundary omega is Lipschitz then the story is completely different. Okay? It is not compact, and this is becomes so-called a singular integral operator, and uh, this boundedness of this operator on L2 was a hard issue, and this was proved by Kaufman, McIntosh, and Meyer in 82. And this, but the spectrum lies in between this. This is exactly the same property. And uh, this is invertible. This was uh, proved uh, by Vakot. And uh, a lot of people in Wisconsin are studying this, uh, this uh, singular integral operator. Uh, yeah. It was a hot topic when I was a student there. <laughs> OK. Now, let's discuss uh, transmission problem. Transmission problem is uh, H is given, given harmonic function, so entire harmonic function, and uh, this is a, a dielectric constant or conductivity. So in, in domain omega, uh, the electric constant is epsilon C core, and uh, this is uh, epsilon M. So M for medium, okay. Now, we want to solve this uh, divergence equation. This, this equation is actually, uh, this equation is actually, solution U is harmonic here, and harmonic here, and the continuity of the potential, and continuity of the flux. Continuity of flux means uh, epsilon C and du, d nu, is the same as epsilon M of du, d nu on the boundary. So transmission problem is uh, always uh, thinking this interface problem as a continuity of the potential and continuity of the flux. Okay. But the continuity of flux means that uh, if you look at just uh, remove this, then it has a jump, Cont uh, the normal derivative, because these two constants are different. There is a jump of the, of the normal derivative. So, you know, to take care of this jump, it's quite natural to 
find to to seek a solution in this form h is the background one and single layer partition now using this uh, uh, jump relation this jump relation of the single layer potential if you take a normal derivative this a uh, continuity of potential and continuity of the flux then we need to solve to find the solution phi you need to solve this equation once you solve this equation then uh, just plugging into this formula you will find the solution okay but this number this number is uh, very I mean we have to pay attention to this uh, number okay what is this number suppose epsilon C and epsilon M are positive both of them are positive which means that this equation is elliptic okay? if the both of them are positive then it is outside of minus one half one half I told you that the minus one half half is the spectrum and spectrum lies in between minus one half and half so this number is outside of the spectrum of the Neumann Poincaré operator right which means that the, this equation can be solved so it is elliptic mm -hmm. it should be solved now suppo <coughs> suppose epsilon c is negative what happens negative means uh, negative the y you may heard this meta material or things like that and they, 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 they are making this kind of the material negative dielectric constant then this guy may lie in the spectrum of this it cannot be inverted okay? this is quite interesting now the, the, they, they are looking at the I mean, we are looking at the, the inside the spectrum and the, in physics this number if it is a negative or this number is eigenvalue of this operator Neumann Poincaré operator then this this number is called the plasmonic eigenvalue so or the plasmonic resonance these things happens if it is negative okay. so uh, properties of the Poincaré Neumann operator is uh, this is uh, in usual space uh, this operator is self edge joint only when omega is a disco ball and this was proved by Lim and uh, uh, but uh, uh, if we introduce a new inner product this is a single layer potential and take the inner product of this then this is also inner product on the L2 zero L2 zero is uh, the L2 with the mean zero okay and then okay now this is uh, the uh, how do you read this uh, primary or uh, the, sometimes it's called the primary formula and the, some people call it Calderon's identity and this single layer potential and normal Poincaré operator and the normal I mean, adjoint of normal Poincaré operator and the uh, this Single layer potential, they are equal, which means that the, if you take an adjoint of this, then they are the same. Okay, which means that the, this operator, this operator, is self adjoint with respect to this inner product. Okay, so because this is a self adjoint, it this operator admits spectral resolution and in general spectral resolution has takes this form but uh, if it has it is compact I mean domain is uh, smooth enough then it is compact so spectral resolution all this uh, measure is a singular measures and the spectral resolution looks like this these are eigenvectors and eigenvalues and these all these eigenvalues lie in between minus one half and one half and it converges to zero okay so
So for example, for example, if it is a disk, then zero is uh, the only eigenvalue of this. Okay, the only eigenvalue. Of this. Yeah. And uh, if it is a ball, then eigenvalue of this looks like this. You can compute it. If it is an ellipse, the long axis is, I mean, the major axis is A and the, the minor axis is B, then this is eigenvalues. Okay, but the, the, it's, it's quite important to look at this. This in 3D, this is a polynomial decay to zero. But this guy is exponentially fast to zero. Right? It's a huge difference in 3D and 2D. At, at the end of this, uh, almost end of lecture, I'll talk, I, I said that I'll talk about the anomalous localized resonance. And in 2D, localized resonance occurs because of this property. And in 3D, it does not occur because of this property. One half is also, one half is an eigenvalue, but the eigenvalue, this eigenvalue is not on the, on the space H, it's on L2, okay? Yeah. This is also important property, okay. This is, uh, I mean, this eigenfunction has uh, some physical meaning, and so-called uh, uh, equi equilibrium distribution of charge, right there. And there are some conjectures about this uh, eigenfunction. For example, one th is called the Gruber's conjecture. That the, if the eigenfunction is one, then domain must be four. It's, uh, it's almost proved, um, almost uh, com complete proof. Not, not complete, but uh, for the convex domain, it, ha it has been proved that it, it is true. Um, Okay. This is a, I think this is quite an interesting question. Suppose domain is smooth enough, then it is a compact, so it has a discrete eigen spectrum, right? But what happens if the, it is merely just a Lipschitz? Because it is not compact, The spectrum may not be discrete. It may have continuous spectrum. But I, I'm not aware of any, any example, of, even, even the, take a square. What is the spectrum of this the normal Poincare operator? I don't know. And there are some, some guys uh, who computed, uh, I mean, numerically computed, and there are some evidence that there is a continuous spectrum, but uh, I mean, analytically or rigorously, I don't have any example of the continuous spectrum. And another one is, uh, uh, as I said, uh, in 3D, 3D, uh, so in, uh, for the ball, the spectrum, the discrete spectrum looks like a one over n, right? Actually, it's a precisely one over two times two n plus one. It's a one over n decay it has. And uh, my my guess is uh, without any basis probably, <coughs> the ball has the fastest decay. So all other domain, the, the, their spectrum is uh, slower than one over n. It implies something very important. Let's prove it. Okay. Okay. Now let's move to the second topic. Is everything fine? Any question or? Already bored. <laughs> okay. So, 
So let's, uh, let's look at the, this problem. So we discussed this uh, transmission problem. And to solve this, uh, this uh, solution of this uh, uh, transmission problem can be written like that. H is the background solution plus a single layer potential of the certain potential. And this, this potential should satisfy this integral equation. Okay. Now, you expand it. Okay. You expand this one in series, sine or cosine series or polynomial series, polynomials. Then, uh, because uh, here I'm taking normal derivative, so I'm taking the normal derivative of this guy and take the inverse of this. Lambda is uh, this number. Lambda is this number. I'm taking the inverse of that. Then uh, solution can be written like that. Okay, this is just a, I mean, uh, because. Uh, the H admits this, oh, this should be infinity, uh, admits this kind of expansion, then it's kind of the principle of superposition. It's a, this is a solution, okay? Now, uh, expand the gamma again, then U, the solution U looks like uh, H plus these guys, okay? And this guy, this m alpha beta, is uh, defined by this. This is a Poincaré Neumann operator, and they take uh, inverse of that, and they take uh, integral of this. This number, this is a sequence of numbers, right? Sequence of numbers. This number is called the generalized polarization tensor. Okay. <coughs> Now, I'm claiming that the, this, this number represents shape. Okay. This is a geometric quantity. Okay. This number is called, I mean, uh, the first order one, the alpha beta is a multi-index. If the size of alpha and the beta are one, then it is called the polarization tensor. And the polarization tensor is, uh, is particularly meaningful because of uh, uh, wait a second, where is uh, solution is looks like this. So polarization tensor, I mean the solution in the first order term, the polarization tensor I mean, appears in this uh, expansions. Okay, so it is like a dipole moment. It's uh, the background solution, and take a gradient of that and polarized and then spread out by the green function. It's, it looks, it's, it's the meaning of that is this. Okay. <coughs> so this polarization tensor appears in many contexts, the low frequency asymptotics of the wave, the climbing, and the study of the potential flow is classical, the pole is zero, and the theory of composites. Okay. So, this m alpha beta depends on the domain and the con this constant. And so we can write uh, this m alpha as a lambda, depending on lambda and the domain. And actually, as a function of lambda, this is a holomorphic function of, of, of uh, outside this uh, slit. Okay. So, General polarization tensors are building blocks of the far field expansion of U in the presence. Of the far field expansion means, in, in physics, it is called the multipolar expansion. Okay? The multipolar expansion of the solution. And uh, GPT carries rich information on the shape of the inclusion. For example, full set of, you, you, may, heard, you may heard this problem. Can you hear the shape of a drum? This is called the inverse, inverse spectral problem. Uh, from the eigenvalues, can you recover the shape? The answer is no, right? But the full set of the general polarization tensor can recover the domain yeah. uniquely. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, to this ones uh, I'll explain later. So the properties of the generalized polarization tensor is a symmetri symmetric. This is a harmonic polynomials, harmonic coefficients, harmonic polynomials, then you can switch. So first order polarization tensor is a matrix, and as a matrix, it is a symmetric matrix. And the uh, positivity, so you said first this, and so for example, the first order pol eigenvalue of the, of the polarization tensor satisfies this one. So it, the eigenvalue already contains information about the size, the volume. Yeah? Right? And the unique, as, as I told you, that uh, if these two numbers are the same, then domain must be the same, and this number must be the same. And uh, so the transformation formula says, if you scale it, then it has this uh, invariance, and the translation is invariant on the translation. It's just the first order polarization tensor, and the rotation formula like that. And for the, for the ellipsis, for the ellipsis, it has this form. You can, you can compute the explicitly if the, the, the polarization test. Okay. So the, if it is a ball, say A and B are the same, then these two numbers are the same. So this is a dial, I'm not dial, this is an isotropic matrix. <coughs> okay. So optimal bounds of the polarization test. This was uh, called the Hashian Strickman bounds, and first found by Lipton, and then later they didn't know that the, the, the Lipton already proved it and that they derived this uh, formula. So this is a matrix, and trace of the matrix is less than this number, and this number is lower than this trace. This is one eigenvalue, and this is another eigenvalue. So the trace is a sum of these two eigenvalues, and they are below this uh, green line. And the inverse, trace of the inverse satisfy this. This trace of inverse is 1 over lambda 1 plus 1 over lambda 2, right? So this is a hyperbola. And in between, I mean, this uh, matrix, the trace, I mean, the eigenvalues should lie in between these two curves. And uh, this is optimal in a sense that uh, any, any point inside this is an uh, eigenvalue of the certain polarization tensor. Right? This was uh, proved by Captain Bosco and Vogelius, and uh, we also proved it. But the interesting thing is that uh, this one is uh, this one is here. Now you move, you make a cross, then the eigenvalues move in this direction. So this this point means that the infinity long crosses. How about this point? What what, do you, what is your guess? This point corresponds to ellipse. And now you move this direction. If the, you make a cross, it's like a isotropic, non anisotropic crosses. Okay. Then moves in this direction. Okay. And this, this line corresponds to, so the, if the, it is a ellipse, I, I, I computed the ellipse and you take the inverse of this, then you can see immediately that the, that the polarization, I mean, the trace looks like, oh, K is a, I'm sorry, here, this is one and this is K. Okay, this. And this is exactly, exactly this line. And uh, there was uh, one conjecture by the Polya and the Ziegel, they conjectured that the, if the polarization tensor is here, then it must be 
a disk or a ball. That's the Borel Zero conjecture. But uh, the conjecture is incorrectly stated. Correct statement should be if it is uh, here, then it must be ellipse or ellipsoid. That's the, because uh, this is a kind of isoparametric inequalities. So if the equality holds, then the domain must be ellipsoid or ellipse. And that was, uh, actually that was approved by Graham Milton and myself. And we connected uh, to connect this Paul-Lazago conjecture with the uh, Asherby's conjecture. Asherby's conjecture is this. Okay, this is quite interesting. Suppose you have the uniform field. Now you insert different kind of material. Then field is perturbed. Okay? But the shape of the field, the uh, shape of the domain is uh, ellipse or ellipsoid. Then field inside is uniform. You see, this is a linear. And actually we conjecture that the, the domain with such a property must be ellipsoid. And, uh, and these two conjectures are equivalent. Okay. Uh, electrical field, you may say. Uh, actually, Ashley's conjecture is about the elastic uh, field. Elasticity field. Elasticity field? Yeah. Elastic field. Uh, what, what is, uh, so you say it's a great, great, yeah, gradient of the, the displacement. Yeah, the gradient of displacement. So it, it, it may consider there's a stress or a strain or things like that. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Uh, this is advertisement. Now, uh, polarization tensor was uh, defined for for the polynomials, but uh, uh, what is important is just the harmonic combination of those potentials. I mean polynomials. So, if the, we take a harmonic combinations of this, then we can define so so-called contracted uh, general polarization tensor. And then, ah, uh, this is become too technical. Then I take, uh, <laughs> you can take uh, the com complex combination of these potentials. And then <coughs> this, uh, this complex, com um, complex the general polarization tensor satisfies these kind of the uh, transformation, transformation formula. Okay, the reason why we are pretty much interested in in this kind of transformation formula or invariance is that uh, because this uh, the basic philosophy is this this is a geometric quantity it is representing it's a describing geometry or shape okay then we want to make, uh, cook up some kind of invariance okay we want to cook up some kind of invariance so i have sh i have a dictionary I have the, the dictionary of the shapes. Okay, I computed all the invariants. Now, so maybe this is a this is a good a good way of the describing this. I have the dictionary of the airplanes, and I computed all the the, the invariants of the airplanes. Now, I saw an airplane. That I detect an airplane. Then I compute the dic I compute the invariance, and look at the dictionary, and then I identify which airplane it is. Is the uh, enemy's airplane or our airplane, and things like that. This is a so-called dictionary matching or pattern recognition. So for that, we need the invariance, and for to to make a invariance, we need this kind of transformation formula. Okay, so this is maybe too technical, but the uh, this kind of transformation formula holds. And the asymptotic formula, so H has uh, this kind of the harmonic uh, expansions, then we have this uh, asymptotic formula, and in three dimensions, uh, spherical harmonics can be used. 
אוקיי. אוקיי. So there are many geometric quantities associated with shape. For example, eigenvalues, capacities, GPT, harmonic moments, and so on. And uh, GPT is one of, one of those uh, the quantities associated with the shape. And, but uh, as I told you that uh, this uh, GPT contains uh, more information than the eigenvalues. And uh, I'll, I'll show you the GPTs can determine the good approximation of strip. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, the, our, the original strip is uh, this kite. Okay. Now I compute the, the original. I mean, I compute the polarization tensor, the first order polarization tensor of the strip kite, and then. This first order polarization tensor has, I mean, th there is a unique, unique ellipse corresponding to first order polarization tensor. And I draw this uh, ellipse. This is called the equivalent ellipse. And you can see that the, this equivalent ellipse represents kind of overall property, averaged property of this uh, geometry, right? Now, how about the higher order ones? So I have the first order polarization tensor, and the second one, and the third one, and so on. And the first one gives us this equivalent ellipse. Second one, ah, uh, this is uh, technical. I'll just uh, show you uh, shapes. Okay, this is the, the first order polarization tensor, and the using using six. Uh, polarization tensor, it is uh, recovering step by step, it is recovering this, the shape. Okay? This is uh, because we don't know. I mean, um, first order polarization tensor recovers, I mean, contains the information about equivalent ellipse, and second one, we don't know. What kind of informa geometric information it contains? We don't know. So we decided to do, to do the approx I mean, optimization. So this, this is the optimization process. Is it? So we optimize. We compute the, the omega. Omega is the target domain. And we compute the polarization tensor. And we take, a, I mean, mi the minimizing this one with respect to domain. And we found this kind of shapes. So it, 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 it is a representing shape. So it has uh, four components. Then this is old, old optimization. It has, it's a struggling. I mean, in order to, to, to detect the topology, it is struggling. Okay. Now, recently, this uh, student, student of Lim, the Yu, Yu Sanghyun, we did the level set uh, approximation, and it, can, it has uh, topology information. So this is amazing. Hmm? The so GPT contains an information about the, the topology. Now, okay, this is our recent, I mean, we just finished. We just finished this paper and submitted it. It's amazing that the we know that the Riemann mapping theorem says that the there is a if it is a simply connected, then there is a conformal mapping from unit disk outside of the unit disk to outside of the simply connected domain, right? And the conformal mapping looks like this. Now. We can compute, we can compute these coefficients, coefficients of the conformal mapping using generalized polarization tensor. We can, I mean, there is an explicit relation between generalized polarization tensor and the coefficients of the conformal mapping. Now, so this is uh, up to U1. 
So this part is ellipse, right? This part is ellipse, and this is ellipse. And if you use up to this part, it is like that. The original shape is a uh, original shape is this one kite shape. So what we did here is that uh, compute the polarization tensors, general polarization, first order term, second order term, and so on. And then using the relation, we found the between conformal coefficient of conformal mapping and the uh, polarization the general polarization tensor, and then use say few terms you, up to u1 then it gives this up to u2 it gives this up to u3 this is up to u6 see this is amazing and uh, I don't know I don't know anybody ever computed this uh, this coefficients one by one mm. I don't know. And this one says something very, imp this is, you, you may heard this a bit of a conjecture about the size, I mean the, 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 the size of the coefficients of the conformal mapping. And uh, we expect that the, our estimates of the polarization tensor gives us the best bounds of these coefficients, I expect so. So, anyway. Uh, this is a recovery, it's, it's a non-constant the conductivity case. But, uh, okay. So summary is, uh, uh, so far we have seen that the GPT carries a very rich information of the shape of the inclusion. And the GPT obeys a certain transformation laws on the scaling, rotation, and shifting. And, th and this property makes GPT suitable for the dictionary matching problem. And the problem is to identify the object in the dictionary when the target object is identical to one of the objects in the dictionary up to shifting, rotation, and scaling. <laughs> Standard method using uh, these harmonic moments but uh, we we uh, we derive some the the invariance and using this the shape descriptor and uh, it say for example these are these are alphabets from A to Z and we compute all the all the shape descriptors invariance and then you see. This is uh, the I mean, dictionary matching, and the, our target is P. And uh, you see, this is uh, uh, this figure is uh, using up to two, two second order polarization tensor, and this is uh, up to five order polarization tensor. And so, you identify P exactly. Okay. But uh, still, you see, this alphabet is. Uh, it's, oh. it's a <laughs> without hole. Because the, if there is a hole, then you cannot do that. <laughs> so, this is a, so far. I mean. Okay. Should we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Questions? Yeah. If there is some applied transformation in the mm -hmm. shape, and it's possible. A fine transform is it's, uh, it's, it's invariant. invariant. A, a fine means what? Uh, uh, it, shifting, yeah, shifting, or uh, shifting or rotation or scaling. It is completely invariant. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Someone's uh, draw the some characters a little lazy. Mm -hmm. That may be detected by the GPT. I think so. I think so. Any other? This one, any other face detection problem using the GPT? Have you ever heard of Actually, actually, this uh, the, I mean the pattern recognition or the shape the recognition using GPT is complete, quite new. I mean, we started this. Yes. 
So I don't know anybody apply this. Actually, this uh, my collaborator Amari uh, is using this uh, GPT for the electro sensing. Electro sensing is by measuring the electrical field. We want to detect uh, some things, and he applied this uh, invariance of the GPT, and uh, it's, it's, it works very well. Mm. So, any other question or? Now I'm going to uh, discuss this inverse problem uh, using this expansion method. But uh, sh should we take a break? <laughs> okay, so we, it, we talked uh, 50 minutes, so let's meet uh, at one o'clock. Yeah. Yeah.